Hello, this video is a simple tutorial for how to make a mining farm out of Raspberry Pis for Lynx cryptocurrency. Follow these steps to set up the Wi-Fi configuration file so that you can run your Raspberry Pis from Wi-Fi. So when you receive your Raspberry Pis, you're going to get your Bramble box and you're going to assemble it. So as you can see here, there are four Raspberry Pis stacked, like so. And there are also certain ports. There's a power port, an HDMI port, and an audio video port. On the front, we have an Ethernet and four USB ports. There are also an each Raspberry Pi, four USB ports, and an Ethernet. Now what you're going to do is you're going to use your USB cables, and you're going to attach them to each Raspberry Pi, like so. Next, what you are going to do is use this USB hub that includes eight USB ports. What you're going to see is a display and a power port as well. You're going to plug each USB plug into the USB ports like the following. Now remove your micro SD cards from your Raspberry Pis and prepare to flash them with a proper Lynx CI ISO. Now that we have opened our computer, we are going to navigate our web browser to the etcher.io website. Links are also in the description. So as we can see, this etcher.io is what we are going to flash each micro SD card with. You can download this for Windows, Mac, or any other OS, but for now we're going to show you how to do this on a Windows computer. So once you see that it has downloaded, which we're going to wait here for it to download. And once it has downloaded, we are going to open it and flash. So the next site that you're going to go to is called getlinks.io. This is the website for the Lynx software or any other Lynx related things that are related to the cryptocurrency or basically anything that you want to know about the Lynx cryptocurrency. We're going to navigate to the downloads side of this website and we are going to download our ISO for our Raspberry Pi. Once again, the links are in the description to download as well. Here we can find the most updated version of Lynx CI and we're going to download the tarball file, which most Windows computers cannot actually parse. So what we are going to do is we are going to download another software known as WinZip or 7-Zip or whatever you can find that will parse this file. And once we see that it has downloaded, we will be downloading another part of the software that we will need and flashing each micro SD card. So as we can see, it's downloading. Just needed to make sure. And now that we have done this, we will see that our files will be downloaded. We're going to go to our folder that it is downloaded in. Right now, I have it in the Downloads folder. Wherever you have set it to download, most, most of the time it's the Downloads folder. And you're going to see this, this license agreement for your Etcher set up. Going to install it. Going to wait for it to install shouldn't take more than a minute and once it has installed you're going to insert your micro SD card using an adapter provided or if you bought an adapter you're also going to open your etcher software once it has opened you're going to select that image put it on the SD card and flash and this is sped up so it's not actually going to take this quickly it should take much longer to flash each SD card and once it is finished, it'll say flash complete, and you will close out because you do not want to format the disk. You are going to remove and reinsert your micro SD card into the computer. What this does is it creates kind of a, a reset on the SD card so that the computer recognizes it as another SD card and not what it just flashed it as. So as we can see here, we're going to pull up our other SD card. So we have our 
we have a, a disc called boot. And the boot disc is what we are going to go into. So once we open our boot disc, there's a whole bunch of files here. And this is basically what the Raspberry Pi uses to, to boot itself before it starts building the, the OS. So we're going to take this, this file for the WPA supplicant file, and we are going to edit the file. So what we want to do is we want to open the file and edit it with a notepad. It's going to ask what do you want to open it with because it doesn't recognize the .conf file. So you're going to open it with notepad, and you're going to see that it has all this text in it, and it says to replace your SSID with a valid SSID name and replace your password with a network password. So you're going to replace areas down here where it says SSID and password with your SSID for your network and your password for your network. Once you've done this, you're going to save it, close out, and copy the file into this boot folder. Copy it directly into this boot folder. Do not copy it anywhere else. Don't copy it into another subfolder. Put it directly on through the root of the folder. Once we have done this, we want to safely eject our SD card. And it'll say safe to remove hardware. And that's when we know it is safe to remove our SD card. So now we will remove our SD card and reinsert it into our Raspberry Pi. So you'll reinsert it into the port of your Raspberry Pi, like so, and repeat the process for all of the other three Raspberry Pis. So now that you have your entire Raspberry Pi set up, make sure that you have all four plugged in before you plug in the power. Now take your power cord and plug it in at one time. This is important as you want each Raspberry Pi to be set up simultaneously. Now that you've plugged it in, plug it into your power source and let it set up. The OS takes about 14 hours to install, so for a good measure, leave it overnight, forget about it, go to sleep, and it'll be running the next day. The HDMI ports are not required to set up links, however for those techie users that want to log in to the Pi and watch it mine or change preferences, this is available. If you ever want to, you can plug it in at any time. Thank you for watching this video, I hope it was helpful and I hope it was enjoyable. Your Raspberry Pi is now mining links.